Welcome to FX Street. If you like what we're talking about, you like the content we are producing, head on over to YouTube, join our channel by hitting the subscribe button. You can follow Akash and I individually on Twitter, Akash at Mangyeko Zero, and myself at Just Analysis One. Taking a look at Ethereum here, um, you know, Ethereum from a point and figure perspective, it is uh, setting up for a little bit of a I got my charts are kind of all messed up here from my analysis the other day. Uh, from a, from a daily perspective, actually, I wanted to look at that first. You know, it's it's testing now below that uh, below the cloud, but it, you know, it had been holding that entire zone fairly strongly there. Um, you know, it had, there's a there's a a bull flag inside this entire move here that's been holding up pretty nicely. And actually, where is that? I had that all over here, I think. And where'd you go? Oh. Well, that's all right if it's not there. Oh, well. Or it's right here. E yep, right there. There's. Okay, got it. <laughs> so we had this support held uh, up against that 30, 3,800 level where you have this kind of confluent zone of that. 100% Fib expansion, single span B, and the bottom of a of a bull flag. And right now we're kind of teasing a break below that. But as long as we don't move or return with a, you know, if we have a close below, uh, you know, at 37.75 or lower, uh, probably going to see a substantial drop. But um, for right now still looks pretty supportive and that we we might see it continue to push up higher towards that uh certainly if it gets past 40 41 25 i'm looking at it to begin its rise to 53 50. now what i said in the bitcoin video when i was doing my uh 2022 cyclical analysis for ethereum i don't want to take up too much time on this because we're going to be doing uh i'm doing a my kind of yearly forecast on it um, but when I was doing the cyclical analysis, I was checking out uh, the astronomical cycles and how they relate to um, Ethereum. And one of the ones that really kind of stood out and I went, huh, that looks a little weird. It's the, uh, the, uh, pra the uh, asteroid series and its declination cycle. So this data is pulled from NASA JPL and I mean, that's, that's where the data is pulled from. But Ethereum, for whatever reason, seems to follow the contour of this declination cycle fairly consistently. And when I saw it, I was like, hmm, okay, well, that's, you know, there's not a lot of data for Ethereum. It's, you know, got roughly six years worth of data. But even Bitcoin doesn't really have a lot of data when you compare it to other financial instruments. But how, how does Bitcoin's chart look, look with that? Same, same kind of story. Little minor deviations, but otherwise, it seems to follow the contour of this pretty consistently, which matches up really well with um, the 800, uh, the 800 to 900 day cycles that Bitcoin seems to find itself in in its bullish expansion phases for. And as a GAN analyst, these these interest me a lot because of how cycles work. What's interesting is that the cycle terminated or had a hiccup almost, and, and this is important for Ethereum. This is that's why I'm going over with Bitcoin too. But what's interesting is that the 10-year cycle terminated pretty much right during the COVID crash. If we measure the the time of the first traded date, as this is the weekly, so the weekly. July 23rd, 2010, you go all the way to the time of the COVID crash, 3,521 days. Looking at a 10-year period, it's a little short of 3,650 or 10 years, and that's where it ended. And so if the 800-day cycle begins over, which is what I, I believe it did, we won't see the top of this market show up until roughly the slope of this declination cycle in series. Uh, begins to turn in late the the last week of June, first couple of weeks of July, and so Bitcoin still has 
roughly six months of upper momentum ahead of it. Not, not this huge, like explosive move, but that, and then that applies to Ethereum too. Um, so for Ethereum, we haven't really seen the, uh, the end of the upwards movement here, even though it looks very much like that could be the case. Um, but that's just kind of what, so, so long story short for Ethereum uh, going into the weekend, if we get up to 4,200, um, I'm looking for it to break out of the bull flag and test 5,350. Uh, and then if it, if it can't stay above this bear flag and above that 3,800 zone, basically if we have a close at 3,775, um, we, we could see some returns down to that 3,300 3, level very quickly. And, and perhaps even lower to 2,800. But that does it for me on Ethereum. I'll pass it off to you, Akash. Thank you, John. That was, uh, that was interesting, uh, interesting with the declination cycle chart indicator. Or what do you yeah. call that? Yeah, well, it's uh, not really an indicator. It's the, a line chart of um, the long, latitude, uh, longitude, longitudinal position of a according to the celestial equator that's how it's measured oh okay interesting yeah it's cool stuff uh, yeah so for me uh, i don't want to go into the hard time frame i just want to look at the four hour time from here i see a falling wedge that's being formed here expected ethereum to uh hover around the 4000 level and then go uh retest the, the 41 break above the 4155 level here and then this was from a target, which is 44.33, but uh, Ethereum seems to have been rejected again here. So I'm expecting it to come down lower. Although I don't see it coming all the way down to the 3600, I feel like there's going to be some sort of uh, buying pressure here that I uh, that Bitcoin is going to see. Uh, again, around the the 70.5 fib here at uh, 3780 dollars is what I'm looking at. Uh, to enter longs. If I do get this uh, right, then I'm looking to take profits around 41.55. Uh, I want to be a little conservative here because things are a little uncertain for Bitcoin. I'm expecting it to hit 40, 53,000, $53, but uh, that's not happening. So for now, I want to take profits at 41.55 and maybe leave like 10% of my position uh, to 4,433. Uh, that's my take uh, from a bullish perspective. But if we lose uh, $3,669 level here, then I'm uh, anticipating a retest of 3415 Again, there's, there's, there's a bit of FPG here uh, present. Let me just mark that out. So I also feel like we might if we lose 3,400, uh, there's a good chance we come down here, fill this FPG and retest at 3,000 psychological level. So that's my take on Ethereum from bullish perspective. Uh, I see 4,400, maybe 4,500 as like uh, my upside potential. But uh, for the downside, I see it retesting 3,000, 3,000, yeah, 3,000 level. Cool. That's it. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.